life. My name is Jacqueline Johnson. You might know me from some notes on napkins and no subject. And I am here with Relativity Coin talking about the business of fashion. Um, I'm going to kick it off by just having all of our panelists introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Heather Lipner, and I'm the founder of Uncovet.com. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Cott, and I'm the founder of CloseTheRich.com. Hi, my name is Lulu, and I'm the founder of LuluAndYourMom.com. Um, hi, I'm Alisa Gold Simon. I'm the co-founder of Pose. Awesome. Um, so I think just to get everyone familiar with everyone on the panel and their backstory, I thought we could kind of talk about how everyone's career has brought them to this place. In your particular niche in business, how fashion has sort of evolved for you. So we'll start with Lisa. Okay. <laughs> so I actually started as a fashion journalist. So I started more on the traditional media side, um, writing online and for print publications. And I think what's unique about Pose is that it's a great mobile platform and experience. Um, it's on the web as well, but re we're really mobile first. Um, but we allow users, um, shoppers, and influencers from around the world to upload images of outfits they love, products they're interested in, and actually tag them and share them with their community on Pose and beyond. And I think it's um, you know really kind of the next extension of what we've seen happen in the fashion blogging community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where um, you know there's a more democratized voice um, speaking to fashion, speaking to the latest trends. And with mobile, it kind of becomes almost a microblogging platform where everything's more bite-sized. It's kind of um, created for an on-the-go experience. So I think that's something that I find really exciting. Awesome. Lulu? So I founded um, Lulu and Your Mom uh, when I left my other company, uh, which was Chictopia.com, which is a vertical social networking site for fashion. And what happened was I had accumulated so many followers, and I just I felt like I had a premonition that I was going to probably want to keep them <laughs> somehow. So it was like one of those. The internet at that time was so small that it was just kind of like you could wrangle people up, <laughs> you know, just like cattle. And you just like, come here, right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is where you go. So I made this blog. And then, then blogging became like such a huge thing, you know, because it really empowered people uh, who, you know, otherwise wouldn't have a voice. And so it kind of developed into this kind of um, multifaceted fashion incorporated lifestyle kind of thing and then you know m my end goal was never really uh, blogging anyway it was always just to be entrepreneurial because that's where I came from that's my background so um, I started uh, my fashion label which I founded last year uh, in 2012 and it's called the fashion club which is completely actually separate from the blog, but what was so great was that the blog allowed for me to kind of switch from writing about other people and other people's work to writing about your own work, which mm -hmm. is kind of exciting. Anonymity is actually really good for a business, I think, because then you're able to kind of cultivate something that's 100% mm -hmm. pure. So Be that's, more creative. Yeah, so that's kind of how um, it's evolved and that's where it is right now. That's, so that's awesome. what I do. Yeah. Yay, congratulations. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth? Well, for me, I actually started my career in fashion in the digital space. I was hired by uh, Rachel Zoe to launch her digital platform and partnerships, so, which actually ended up turning into the Zoe Report, which mm -hmm. is her daily newsletter, and got my feet wet in the industry in that really interesting um, way of merging tech and fashion really much at the beginning when we had really kind of like notable people kind of going, capitalizing on their following on the web. Right. And um, just kind of by living in that space, myself and my counterparts all kind of were constantly acquiring things. <laughs> and I saw a major need in the market for something that really spoke to people in the industry or people who aspired to be in the industry and a way to to provide an outlet for them to get rid of their items. So mm -hmm. that's how Closet Rich came to be. Awesome. Heather? Um, I started in the industry from a tech perspective and a design perspective. So um, before Uncovet, I was the creative director for MySpace. Before MySpace, I was um, designing lots of different e-commerce sites and startup sites. And I was at Fluid Design, which was an agency. But during that path, I mean, I was such a big fan of fashion and reading all the blogs. And what was happening, I think, in my head was that I was like able to consume so much so quickly about designers and independent designers and, 
And I was able to kind of um, come to this realization that I could potentially predict trends with the data out there from the bloggers because at that point in time, the bloggers were the one who were doing and still today marketing all of the products. So I started on Covet and it was it's very focused on independent designers and it's focused on products that are trending in the blogosphere on, on the web and um, that's how the the foundation of the curation happens and you know it's interesting to me that the theories behind all the math that uh, we have you know dashboards where the buyers look into and understand you know Pinterest and supply and all the blogs and it's really interesting to me to watch those trends and now be an influencer amongst even the bloggers. Yeah um, that leads really nicely into my next question which is how do you utilize bloggers? Are they one of your strongest, you know, forms of marketing? Um, you know, Lulu, as a blogger, obviously you get approached by a lot of brands. You know, how have you sort of used your experience um, as a blogger and applied that to your own label? It's kind of funny because um, one of the things about the line that I do is that I actually don't do any gifting to bloggers um, because blogging is marketing more so and it's getting your stuff out there but like for me it got overwhelming because I tried to be uh, good to brands you know when they want to like you know you want to do your part but eventually like it just it got so overwhelming you couldn't be everything to everyone and it you lose kind of a sense of like who you are for a second mm -hmm. and what you represent I think one of the best things that people can do actually on as like a person on the web is to be able to say no and to be able to be like not think about things like well how much are they going to pay me and like stuff like that because sometimes uh, like I'll see things that like other bloggers represent that will they'll promote and even if I like them sometimes you know you they promote so many things that sometimes even as like an onlooker I'm like well I can't because you promote that and you were, so I think it's something that everyone should be kind of conscious about and not just like this wild frenzy for mm -hmm. like how much free stuff can I get and how many brands can I work with and how many because it's like at the end of the day it really dilutes like the purpose of what you are which is almost like you know like a newsstand it's like a curated mm -hmm. kind of selection of things that people go to and they he, he, like you always go to Cosmo for like kind of like bad sex advice and like <laughs> you go to like you know vote you know what for you're gonna get yeah you know you what you're that. gonna get as yeah. opposed to kind of like this kind of free for all of just like well and I think that's interesting because I think that is one of the evolutions of the business of fashion right is yeah. bloggers started off as this like democratization you know like I have this voice I have this perspective and I think when initially in the, in like the early heydays of blogging everyone had a very specific vision I had a very meta moment like last week where like a blogger wrote me to ask if my brand would sponsor her so I'm like it's like a blogger asking another blogger for free stuff that's yeah. so meta. <laughs> it really it, it's coming full circle because a lot of the bloggers very similar to you um, you know Lisa you come from editorial in a way you know and you use that as your platform your launching pad um, which is why I think it's interesting and, and much to Heather's point like curation is key because it is getting overwhelming and it is getting to that that bubbling point so I, I do think that's I think that's really interesting. So um, on that note, like in terms of technology, you know, since that's obviously the platform, how has technology impacted your business? Do you feel like you have to keep up because technology is moving so quickly? Um, Elisa, maybe you can. Yeah, I mean, we're in a unique position because we are mobile first and because we do work pretty closely with Apple. So like each time that they have a major release coming out, for example, recently iOS 7 came out. So we worked with them to make sure that we had an iOS 7 ready app for the second that they made iOS 7 ready to go because we knew they'd be looking for fashion apps to feature. And if Apple features you, it's like the floodgates open and you just, you know, have exposure that like no one, right. you know, beside like Anna Wintour can give you. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, as much as we can be on top of the curve there, um, um, you know, it's a blessing and a curse in fashion. I think that, you know, when we started out, it was like January of 2011, and I was literally knocking on the door of all these brands and, you know, fortunately talking to a lot of bloggers who got it because they were, you know, very nimble and digitally savvy at that point. But so many of the fashion brands were like, we don't really understand what apps are, and we're not really sure what the purpose is. And right. now I think everyone understands, you know, that time spent on smartphones and time spent on tablet is just going up exponentially and we're checking our phones 150 times on average a day and so I, th I think in terms of 
technology, we, we think a lot about, you know, what are the latest like integrations and opportunities literally from like a product standpoint, like how can we make things faster or prettier or m more, you know, experiential. But then also I think we're looking at the trends and thinking about where people are spending their time and understanding right. that, you know, we have to move with that curve exactly. as as any company probably needs to. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please feel free to leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe. Subscribe. subscribe.